So, does anybody have this one for negative one? What is y? Johnny? One. One, what do you guys think? Zero. Okay. Blake? Zero? Three. Three, everybody agree? Yep. yep. Okay. Yes. Seven. Seven. Two times two, four plus three, mm -hmm. seven. Okay. Not a very uh, tricky thing, right? Pretty familiar. So now I'm going to ask you a question, and we're going to learn this thing called, it's, a, it's just a matter of notation. So it's just a matter of recognizing symbols and what they mean. All right? So tell me what you think about what, what that might mean. Okay, so just write it down in your notes. Write f of x equals, write f of 2, and then write what you think f of 2 or f parentheses 2 would mean. All right, so I'm going to read it the way that it's read, so you probably don't know this yet. So this says f of x okay, equals 2x plus 3, so what is f of 2? So what do you guys think? What, what was your guess? Keep in mind, likely to be wrong, because how would you know what it means for sure? Alex, what do you think? It could mean f of 2 equals 2x plus 3. f times f. Okay, so what would f times f look like? What did you do? f squared. f squared. So f, like that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so if f, if f equals 2x plus 3, then f squared would mean this. Squared? I'm not sure. That's fine. I'm, I bet most people are not sure. Why would they be, right? We've never seen this before, I think. Sean? f multiplied by 2. F multiplied by 2, so maybe it means F times 2. Did you kind of try to carry that out and write what that would be? What's the result of multiplying F by 2? No. no? I did. You, you multiplied F by 2, what did that look like? Yeah, well, F by 2 would be 2F. Or no. You didn't, if I were to multiply f by 2, f is this thing. If I were to multiply this thing by 2, that would be different from what you're saying. Yeah. Right? What f by 2 would be, well, 2 times f, right? This is x. Or sorry, this is f right here. If we multiply it by 2, then you get 4x plus 6. Okay? See what I'm saying there? If that means f times 2, then that's what f times 2 would look like. What do you think, Johnny? Functions multiplied by two, so this. Okay. All right. Blake, what you said you got? What did you get? I just when I did that without the multiplied by two part, I got seven. How did you walk me through how you got seven? I got I plugged in x or two for x on the other uh, side. So you didn't multiply f by two. You act, you multiplied two by two, right? You just essentially plugged two in for x. And so, you know, what do I get when I do that? Seven. So seven. Okay. So of these guesses, and of, of maybe more guesses that, that the rest of you made, that is correct. Okay. That's what f of 2 means. It means plug 2 in for x. Okay. It just means plug 2 in for x. So f of 2 is not f squared. Fine guess. It's not f times 2. Understandable guess. Usually when you see something next to a parenthesis, that means multiply. Right? But sometimes we have notations or we have words that we use in multiple contexts, but they mean different things depending on the context. Do you know what I mean by that? Uh, let's see, like the word suffer. What does suffer mean? Okay, so in that sentence, what does suffer mean? Suffer means the consequences. Like. You get the consequences? Get them. They 
face. Sounds good, right? Face. Yeah, face. Just face them. Okay. Let's see. Let's do it. Okay, so there's like a negative connotation there, right? Like you give us, you're gonna have to deal with this bad thing. If you suffer, you're going through this bad thing. Well, suffer, if you don't know, it could also mean just to be patient. Okay? And not really a not really a, a, a bad thing in that context. If I say, uh, you know, suffer your friend. If you suffer a friend, that doesn't mean you do bad things to your friend. It just means you're patient with your friend. Okay. So different words that when you suffer. That's the first one that came to my mind. Uh, but depending on the context, things that look the same can mean different things. And so F parentheses 2 means plug in 2 for X. F of 2 means plug in 2 for X. Okay, four plus three. It seems like they're boring you because it seems so simple and you get it, then that's great because I've tried teaching this many different ways and maybe this is the way that most people get it the first time. That doesn't happen usually. Johnny? Is that also really, is it only really like x of 3? Do you mean the same thing? Yes. So if I change the number that's in the parentheses, I change the number that I'm plugging in for x. <coughs> okay? So let's make up one on the fly. Let's say that f, actually, let's, use, let's, let's teach you something else about function notation. g of x equals 4x minus 9. What do you make of this letter G here instead of F? Um, it's the same thing, except for just a different variable. Yeah, that's pretty much it, right? We, we would call it the name. This is the name of the function. The name of the function is G, and the input is X. The name of the function is G, the input is X. So, you, let's see if you're getting this. Don't show me without uh, giving it away to anybody else. Show me what G of negative 5 is. G of negative 5. For that equation? Yeah, for G. See, and you know it's G because this is G. Okay. And if I put f of x over here, figure it's 2x plus 3 we use. Why would no not to use this because it's not G. This is G. Right? So tell me what G of negative 5 is on your paper. I'm just going to walk around and see what you get. One of the things about notation, I was a salesman and try to sell you on how great function notation is, is that it gives functions names. So now we can distinguish them from each other. And I can tell you, tell me what g of negative 5 is, and you know a lot of things just by this notation. You know I'm talking about the function g, not the function f. And now you know that this negative 5 in parentheses means plug negative 5 in for x. Okay. So we get, I'm just going to jump right to negative 29. So negative 5 and negative 20 minus 9, negative 29. Cadence? Why don't you plug in negative 5 for the x by g? Do this one here? Yeah. We did. When you write it this way, you write g of negative 5 equals, and if you were to write you know, all of your work, I think, if I understand your question, we did do that right there. Wouldn't that be the same thing as negative five g equals twenty negative twenty nine? Uh, no, and I, I can understand why you would think that it would. But remember, this doesn't mean g times negative five. <coughs> it means g with negative five plugged in for x. Okay. Okay. Doesn't mean, and you might want to write this down if, if you still were thinking that it means this. It doesn't mean g times negative five, even though. 100% looks like that. It looks like a variable times negative 5. It's not that at all. Okay. So if that was a confusion for you, you should write a little note to yourself. Remember, this is not g times negative 5. This is the function g with the name g with negative 5 plugged into it. Negative 5 plugged in for x in that function called g. equals negative 3x plus 4 g of x, comma there, g of x equals uh, negative 1 half x plus 2, and h of x equals negative 5x. Okay. Uh, so 
so let's look at h of 2. Somebody just tell me what it means, what h of 2 means. Right side and left side of what? Equal Well, there's lots of equal signs. Which equal sign? H. The H one. Yeah, that yeah. one. Right? Not that one or that one? No, the H one. So that's something that H, uh, that, that function notation tells us. So negative 5 times 2, negative 10. Right? Agreed? Yeah. I'm getting that. Okay. G of negative 1 means. Means what? What does it mean? Johnny? That you plug negative one into the x on the g. On the g, okay. So g of negative one, we're plugging it in there and there. Like th there's, the thing on this side is nothing's happening. Like there's no math, no arithmetic happening on the left side. It's just telling us what to do with function, right? So it's telling us to put negative one in here. Negative one half times negative one plus two. Negative one times uh, negative one half is positive one half plus two, two and a half. And lastly, we're going to plug six into the f function for x. Negative three times six plus four. Negative eighteen plus four. Negative fourteen. Y'all agree? Okay. So hopefully now we're, we've cleared up any confusion about it being multiplication or, or squared or anything like that, it means to just plug this number in for x into the function that has that name. Other than that, it's no different, no different at all than y equals, you know, y equals negative three x plus four, y equals negative one half x plus two, okay? X is still the, uh, depend, or the independent variable, g of x is the dependent variable g of x, f of x, h of x, they all act just like y acts, okay? Consider g of x to be, or f of x or whatever, to be like just a variable, just one variable, all right? With the ability to give you some instructions like plug this in for x. So, if we go back to that original function we had, which was y equals, what was that? It was uh, y equals 2x plus 3. So our table looked like x, y, that's good, negative 1, 0, 2, right? And we had uh, 1, 3, three seven. 7. If this, instead we start calling these functions not y equals, but more often f of x equals, nothing really changes. The still, the table would look like this instead, okay? x and f of x. If we were on a graph, okay, then we could call this the x-axis, and this would be what? Y. The f of x axis. That's right. Okay. So y gets swapped out for f of x because it's got a, a few more features, right? It's like a y 2.0. You know what I mean? Like a new updated version of the y app. This app allows you to give different functions different names and to easily tell someone what you want to have them plug in for x, rather than like have to say it in a sentence or put down a table or something like that. Okay. Uh, other than that, it all operates the same, but just for fun, if I were to graph this function, equals, let's try an equal sign, y equals 2 thirds, 2 thirds, x plus <coughs> Actually, why don't you go ahead and just draw quickly that graph. 2 thirds x plus 5. This intercept is 5. Maybe the f of x intercept is 5. I like that. Just say not y, f of x. Using that big vocab, OK? And? The slope is 2 thirds, so you go up 2 and over to the right 3. Excellent. To the right, because it's a positive, right? Up and to the right, positive slope. And now we have our line. I'm going to modify this just slightly. See if we are really grabbing hold of this. What would, uh, what would, here, let's try this. Let's call it a different function. g of x equals 2 thirds. I don't want you to grab this one. I just want you to think about it mentally. Okay. 
What does this, this, what would the graph of g of x have in common with the graph f of x? Yeah? It has the same slope. Okay, so these two lines, what would we call those two lines to, to parallel. each other? Parallel. parallel? Mm -hmm. Okay, what would be different? Thank you. Thank you. Fx or dx or y intercept. Right, okay. Okay. So there's a, uh, it's fine to call it the y intercept. It would just be, well, where would it be? Seven. Which is how much more than the y-intercept of two. Two. f of x? <laughs> two more. So this is what we could call like g of x mm. equals f of x plus two. Plus two. Yeah, plus two. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So we can turn functions into other functions. So let's say, I'll just keep it on the screen for a second. Let's say we had, uh, let's use a crazy name, like Q of X, okay? You can use any letter you want, Q of X. Let's say it, uh, well, it is what it is, okay? We don't really know what the equation for it is, but let's say this is, there's this other function, R of X. Okay, and R of X equals Q of X minus eight. Don't say it out loud yet. Think about, you know, how would, there's not a lot you can say about it, but you can say something for sure about r of x compared to q of x, because you can use q of x to make r of x. Think about if I know what q of x looks like, here's what r of x is going to look like. What do you see, Jeff? Uh, the, the r of x and the q of x would have the same slope, okay. but it would be the intercept. So are you saying the y-intercept would be negative 8? No, the, depending on what the y-intercept of q of x is, uh -huh. it would be minus 8 from the rx, r of x would be minus 8 of q of x. Excellent. You see what Johnny's saying? Mm -hmm. yeah. Whatever the y-intercept of q of x is, the y-intercept of r of x will just be 8 lower. So r of x y-intercept could be 1,000. That would be Q of X, Y intercept would be what? That was a thousand eight. Because we're going to go back to Q of X. Yeah, it would be a thousand eight. Subtract eight, we're down to a thousand. Um, how else would, would they look any different otherwise? Would those two look, graphs look different from each other otherwise? What do you mean otherwise? Like, is the only difference between them that, that R of X is eight lower than Q of X? Yeah, that would be B, right? Because all this is doing is subtracting 8 from whatever Q of X's output is, right? Talking about the input, the output, the range, the range. Whatever the output of Q of X is, right? You just subtract 8 from it. So imagine all the points of Q of X would just be 8 less. Okay? The Y value would be 8 less. Let's see if we're just grabbing onto that concept real quick. Let's pull out some. All right, so let's say this is the graph. This is the graph of f of x. And uh, g of x, which we'll give a different color, g of x is equal to, is equal to f of x minus 3. Think about it for a second. I'm going to ask for a volunteer in just a minute to come up and draw the graph of g of x. Draw the graph of g of x. Maybe Sean needs to get up and walk around. He's a little sleepy. Can, uh, well, I think you can draw it. Unless you want to use this. Come on up 
and draw the graph for us. The very important thing that Cadence is saying is that we're going to move it straight down, right? Everything else is the same, just move straight down uh, by three. So let me lock this in place so I can uh, pick this guy here, and duplicate it, put it right on top, and you move it straight down by three, and it really helps to look at the y-intercept so we can move it down by three, right? But it's straight down every point, Right, this one, well, whatever the y value of that one is, for g of x, we're going to subtract 3 from it, so there it goes down 3. Same for this point, and this point, and this point, and this point, all the points, all the points go down 3. Okay, very cool, very good. Uh, let's, let's test you again. A different concept. Here's a real challenging one. Let's see who rises to it. So if this is f of x, let's say it's uh, 3x plus 8 what f of x plus 2 is. We're going to want to write this one down for sure. It's going to take a little bit of work. you see in those parentheses goes in for x. So if we plug in x plus 2 for x, and then we distribute 3 times x, 3 times 2, we get 3x plus 6 plus 8, 3x plus 14. Very good. Which is different from f of x plus 2. What would f of x plus 2 be? This f of x, it sounds the same. f of x plus 2, what would that come out to be, Johnny? Uh, it would be x plus 10. It would be 3x plus 10. A lot of people get 3x plus 10 on that one. That makes sense, but now you see the difference, right? x plus 2 is the thing you plug in for x. You have to distribute, and now you get this new function. How is this function different from that function? Let's look at a couple of uh, graphs to compare. I think you'll find this interesting. Uh, let's go. Okay, so uh, f of x looks like this. It's got a y-intercept of 8, slope of 3. Other one plus fourteen, so it's uh, one, two, three, four, uh, five, eight, eight, or eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Okay, we'll follow that slope of three. So we did f of 
x plus 2. So you might think that, you know, when we do f of x plus 2, uh, the plus 2 on the outside, how does that change the graph of that? Goes up 2, right? We did that a couple, couple different times. So well, what about with the x plus 2 in the parentheses? Did it go up 2? Do you see any movement of 2 at all? Maybe it went up multiple times, two. Mm -hmm. Let's see, it went up one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. Three. This went up three times, five, two. Yeah, that's true. It's not a coincidence, but it has to do with the slope being three and two combined together. One more cadence. You see a, a movement strictly of two somewhere between these graphs? This is f of x, and this is f of x plus 2. Do you see anywhere that it might have moved 2 somehow? Johnny? Uh, horizontal. Ah, it moved horizontally. Look at that. When I, when I kind of messed around with the x, which is horizontal, it made a horizontal movement. When I added 2 to f of x, and remember f of x is like the new y, then it changed y, it went up to. See what I'm saying? When I add 2 to y, it goes up and down. Or subtract, it goes down, add it goes up. If I add and subtract to the x, the x is horizontal. It changes the graph in the x direction, horizontal direction. Kids? I'm still having some trouble with the x and the y. So by you're saying you're having trouble because now we're saying that x equals x plus 2? Because if you were to like play that out, x equals x plus 2, how does that work? I see what you're saying. Um, Do you think you can handle yeah, doing it? I can do it. Maybe you don't believe in it. You don't, you don't agree with it. It's kind of against your politics or something. Mm -hmm. But you can do it, right? It, 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 does, it does work. It does function. I'm not saying that x is x plus 2. I'm just saying we're going to replace x with a modified x. Okay? So let me, let me try to think about that more. Well, you guys are just amazing as usual. So let me... Here, function notation. tell you that f of x equals uh, 11, okay. what could you figure out from that information? Like? Like, mm -hmm. whatever you put in for x should come out to be y. Yeah. So I'm telling you what y is, and so now I can go back and figure out whatever it is that I plugged in for x. Okay. And how would we set that up? How would we figure out? What it is you got plugged into x cadence? 
Um, well, you can plug in 11 for fx. There? Um, yeah, there yeah, yeah, they're equal, right? Mm -hmm. So I can just replace f of x with 11. That would look like 11 equals 2x minus 3. Add 3. Add 3. 2x equals 14. So x equals 7. Exactly. Okay. So I can tell you what to plug in for x. I can tell you what came out for f of x or y. And you can figure out what x was. Very good. Equals 7. Dx plus 9. And g of x equals negative 6x. And I want to know what is f of g of x. So if you, uh, if you want to put that on an extra sheet of paper and turn it in and mark an extra credit at the top, and uh, you know, see how you do with that.